Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's weekly recap is for the week of October 28th through November 1st, 2024. Very slow week. Um, I'm convinced Jack and Diane are, you know, doing a plan, but to me, they should fill Tracy in. But you know what? Hey, you do you. Um, Kyle is actually buying into the plan. Now that Diane's out, he's trying to be there for his father. Forget you stole millions of dollars in company secrets, right? That's an insider. Isn't that insider or something or other? Corporate espionage? But are you okay, dad? I can't believe mom wasn't. Just shut up, Kyle. I'm so sick of him. You know, get your own house. You could afford it. So anyway, you know, Claire's trying to comfort him. She feels Diane's love for him is genuine. Um, Nikki goes to see Jack to make sure his sobriety is not in question, you know, in jeopardy. And he goes, Nikki, no, um, my sobriety is just fine. I'm not going to use pills. It's just been an eye opener and I'm disappointed. You were right about Diane all along. See, that's all he has to say. People are like, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, I was. So Nikki's like, well, Jack, you know, I'm here for you. We could go to a meeting right now. He goes, Nikki, I don't need a meeting. I'm good. So she's like, and he tells her about Victor being behind Glassad, the secret investor. And she's like, wait, what? How do I not know about it? Nikki, you don't know about most things. Most things. This ain't no different. And Jack says, you know, one thing you can do if you if you really want to do something for me, help me get my son out of your husband's clutches. Victor's only doing this to drive a wedge between me and my son. So Nikki goes to see Victor. Oh, she's storming, steaming, mad, right? And Victor's like, I don't give a darn about the Jack Abbott. So what? His family is imploding. You know, I almost lost you. You're my heart. You, you, uh, this family couldn't survive without you. Oh, and he didn't apologize. He ain't apologizing one little bit. She's like, Victor, Jack is still my friend, period. And that's another thing. Oh, he, she's like, Shh, you know, like you can pull all the tantrums you want, but I'm still Jack's friend, right? So um, Phyllis tells Michael, fills Michael in on what's happening with Danny, Daniel. And um, she does not want Christine to be Daniel's lawyer. She's thinking she could pull a mama card and dictate who the lawyer's going to be. And Michael had to tell her, he goes, Phyllis, Daniel is a grown man. Because Daniel was being booked at the precinct by chance, right? She goes, uh, he gets to choose his own representation. You have no, you can't override that. That is his lawful right. And she goes, Christine is only taking this case to throw it. And Michael said, uh, Christine is in love with Daniel's father. She would not take the case to just to, to throw it, Phyllis. And Phyllis is forgetting there was a period when Christine actually was taking care of Danny, Daniel. She loves Daniel. So no, she's not trying to throw nothing, right? So anyway, Phyllis is like, well, I need you involved. And Michael said, you know what? If it'll make you feel better, I will keep my eyes on the case. I will make sure that there's nothing Christine is missing. Okay. So she goes, okay, I feel better about that. She feels better that Michael is going to be also looking at things for her. So then we have Sharon. Oh, she's boohooing to the real Nick, non-hallucination Nick, whereas the hallucination Nick is trying to convince her to more do the right thing. And she's like, no, Cameron told me 
that if I did this, this, and this, and I would be fine. And he goes, Sharon, how fine can you be? You set a man up. He's innocent, Sharon. You at killed Heather. Now there's a young girl without a mother. If Daniel gets sent to prison, how are you going to live with yourself? You can't, Sharon. He's telling her the pressure is already almost causing you to buckle. So she's like, well, no, Cameron can't. He goes, you know what? You're not seeing Cameron anymore for a reason. You're seeing me. And I'm thinking, oh, thank God. Are we finally done with Cameron in that bloody shirt? I was so sick of that, right? So now Nick's in her head. And she's talking to him. He's talking to her, talking to her, still making no sense. And then guess who pops into her, into the her house? But Heather. And oh, it scares her half to death because Heather's looking like zombie lady, right? And what are you doing here? You killed me, Sharon. You murdered me and you framed my husband for it. Or, or you framed Daniel for it. And so she goes, get out of my head. No, she, and Heather's like, I'm going to haunt you. I'm going to make your life miserable. And then she turns and Nick is there. She goes, she needs to get out of my head. She needs to get out of my head. And he's just looking at her. So then she looks back at Heather and Heather's taunting her some more. And then when she looked back at Nick, Nick was gone. No, Nick was still there. She grabs her purse and says, I'm getting out of here. So she, she grabs her purse and runs out. And I thought, delusional these hallucinations are in your head Sharon so no matter where you go Sharon the hallucinations are going to follow you Sharon right everybody so Sharon and Mariah and Tessa it's Halloween we've got Devon and, and Abby and little Dominic and uh, Abby I mean, not Abby, um, Tessa and Mariah have little Aria, you know, dressed up in their little Halloween costumes. And I'm telling you, excellent casting job on Devon and Abby's son. That child, especially in his Hollywood ha Halloween costume with them glasses, and he looks the spitting image of the actor that plays Devon. And I don't know why I'm having a problem with his name. Whatever. You know who I'm talking about. I'll just call him Devon. Spitting image, just like that could have been his actual child, but it's not, right? Excellent casting job. So um, anyway, they're wondering, where is, where's mom? And so she goes, she said she would be here and Mariah had been calling her and calling her. So Sharon pops up, right? And she goes, mom, I've been calling you. She goes, oh, I was just at Cassidy first doing some work. And I'm thinking, really, Sharon, you do know that Mariah can check on that, right? Really? So she goes, but I'm here now. And she's picking up Ari. Oh, look at this beautiful princess. Oh, and she hugs and she kisses her. And she looks up and there is Heather in the park. You murdered me. And Sharon's like, <gasps> Holding his baby. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's see what Mariah or Tessa does. Because see, I'm taking my child out your crazy hands. Because I see something ain't right with you. And why is it? Why, why hasn't anybody beside from Phyllis seen something is definitely wrong with Sharon? Still. A hundred percent. Whenever she sees a hallucination, she cannot keep a train of thought. She just can't. Oh, no, I'm fine. So anyway, um, they're bringing in some storyline that I don't like it with this Amy person had was involved with uh Nate's father Nathan 
before he was with Olivia. And now there's this grow. Uh, that's the stupidest storyline. We don't even need to bring a character in like that. Just uh, come on now. Get out of here, y'all. That <laughs> So um, he ends up making a phone call to his mother, went to voicemail. And he says, look, I got some questions about her, Amy, whatever her name is. And, and do you know her? What kind of person is she? Or had you heard of her? Had dad ever mentioned her? So we'll see. You know, they'll probably have him come back, tell Devon, oh, my mom called. She said X, Y, and Z. Because they're not going to have Olivia actually be on the other end of the line. Or, you know, they're not going to show her. They may show him talking to her, whatever. So he tells Devon. And first he tells Audra and Audra's like, I think she's scamming you. You know, why would she need you to find somebody you don't even know and have you tell him something she never told him all her life? And that that's exactly how I thought, Audra. It's like, I'm going to have a stranger walk up to me and say, guess what? The daddy you thought was your daddy wasn't. My father is your daddy. I just found out I'm your brother. And oh, by the way, your mother's dying. No, no. So Devon, he told Devon and Devon was like, yeah, you better proceed with caution, man. And he goes, well, I put a call into my mom to see if she knew anything about it. And Devon's like, that's a good idea. Cause I don't know. It sounds pretty kind of strange. And so Devon asked Nate to be his best man at his wedding. And of course, Nate says, uh, yes, he would be the best man. Um, and they're happy. They hugged it out, you know, because they've come a long way. And Devon was talking to Lily and Lily is still being ridiculous. Jill, she had a conversation with Jill and Jill told her, look, you and Billy better work it out. And Lily says, you know what, Jill, what do you mean work it out? I want you both running uh, uh, Chancellor co-CEOs. And Lily said, uh, no, Billy is screwing things up. I don't want to be a co-CEO with him. I've been running things fine, things fine for you, Jill, for years. Billy needs to go. And she goes, because because of, of, you know, how he treated me. And she goes, Lily, let's not forget you had a plan to get rid of my son. Okay, you had a plan. And bottom line, Billy is still my son. So no, I'm not going to just... Put him out without cause, Lily. And he hasn't shown me, you know, uh, given me a reason to do that. Not just because you don't want to work. She goes, it doesn't work that way, sweetie. Oh, so now Lily feels, Jill betraying me. Victor and Nikki betrayed me. And Devon is like, Lily, you cannot fight all of these people. That is my company. I built it to, I, I, I built it to what it is. And Devon said, no, Lily, that's where you're wrong. She looked at him, he goes, that's Jill's company. And it's always going to be Jill's company. You just worked for her. And let me tell you, truth be told, the company was not in disarray when Jill had Lily take over for her. It absolutely was not in disarray. It only fell behind a bit. Remember with the whole merger thing and then splitting up the company. And so that did put Chancellor behind once Devon split and took his company back. It kind of put him behind in the market, right? Created some instability that Billy's having to overcome. So anyway, she says, no, I'm going to get what's rightfully mine. And he goes, Lily, there is a company that is rightfully your family's company, it's Winters. And she goes, that's, yes, your company, Devon. And, but, oh, uh, so anyway, and I'm thinking, well, girl, start your own. Your brother is a billionaire. And why Devon doesn't say, you know what, Lily, what are you, what company, what kind of company do you want to do? 
What kind? I'll get, I'll get it done for you. I'll buy it. I, whatever. Since you don't want to work with me, for me, because really it is working for Devon. Devon's got to be the, the head. He really does. I hate to say it. He's got to be the one making all the decision. He's proven that, right? So anyway, um, Victor, now that Diane came to him, she wants him to fire Kyle from Glassad and give it to her so that it would just stab Kyle in the back. And that would be payback for Jack, for her to leave Jabot, you know, come over and work for, for Victor at Glassad. She goes, I would be getting revenge on both of them. Isn't that what you want, Victor? See, no, let's be real. The whole plan is for Diane, Diane to get Kyle fired so Kyle can see. he Victor had no allegiance for him. None whatsoever. So we'll see. Victor's not stupid. And Jack never wins with his plans. He never does. I, I don't understand how Victor does, but Jack for sure. Never, never wins over Victor. And Diane won't be any better. Phyllis and Christine did, did uh, call a truce. Phyllis, Christine said, I need your help. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Phyllis, because she goes, Sharon did it. Sharon did. She goes, uh, uh, we won't be able to prove Sharon did it. From the evidence, I, we wouldn't be able to prove it, nor would anybody believe it. But Phyllis. We have to build a case of reasonable doubt that there were other people that could have wanted Heather dead, could have been someone she prosecuted, could have been Sharon. She says, but trying to pinpoint it on somebody when we don't have the evidence, we won't win. But... If we do our jobs right, I can create really great reasonable doubt. And with reasonable doubt, that's what will get Daniel off. Because that's all I got to prove. And Phyllis sat back and she goes, okay, I'm in. What do you want me to do? Finally, right? So they're going to work together and rattle up Sharon's cage. But look... Heather is rattling up Sharon's brain, so she's not going to last long at all. And then this web wedding of, of Abby and Devon is coming up. They still don't know where it's at. Sally's uh, designing the dress. They don't know anything, and they're still going along with that farce. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. So let's go to Comment Corner. Comment Corner. Denzel says the fact that Chance didn't have enough evidence um, and he decided to arrest uh, Daniel, um, even though he was what fr he was framed is beyond me. But I was so glad that Christine came in and stopped it before Chance arrested him, too. No, he arrested. He arrested Daniel. You might maybe arrested Phyllis, too, because Phyllis was going crazy. Right. And then she came in, and that's the first time Phyllis saw her. It was uh, we're like, what are you doing here? And she's like, lower your voice, you know? And um, Daniel, because Chad said, Phyllis, you know what? You are impeding, you know, this process. I'm going to have to arrest you, too. You keep it up. <laughs> that's my job. Oh, she was just acting really stupid. Um, but Christine put a, a, a kind of a, a stop, a halt to all the madness. So Chance could arrest Danny, take him down and book him. And then she said, I'll be right behind you, Daniel. I said, Danny, Daniel, I'll be right behind you, Daniel. Um, and I'm going to get you uh, out on bail, which she did. She got him out. She got a quick hearing, just put him out on bail. He's not a flight risk. Um, and then Lisa says, if Lucy killed Heather, she has no memory of it. I hope she didn't do it. You know what? I don't know where they're going with that. Who killed Heather? Then Lisa says, Paul being involved would be a conflict of interest, which is so true. Uh, Suze said, I agreed. It's ridiculous. 
Uh, LaShelcha says, Jack and Diane are faking. Tell Tracy. I don't care. Everything Jack said was true. Sharon thinks she's so smart. She made a mistake. If she thinks uh, she will come for Phyllis, bring it on. Oh, no. She's going to be afraid of Phyllis because Phyllis is man. Nick is the biggest whip. He always chooses Sharon over Phyllis. It's very frustrating. Well, no, not in the case of when Cassie died. He chose Phyllis over Sharon. Um, Victor was two steps ahead. Um, I would love to see Victor lose. Me too. Come on now. Anita says, Sharon, the Sharon saga is so boring and ridiculous. Why and what are the writers planning for Daniel, Chance, Phyllis? Very strange. I don't know. Anita. And then Anita also said, daily recap lady. I agree. Diane and Jack are trying to trick Victor and Kyle. I hope it works, but I doubt it. When does Jack outsmart Victor? Victor is treacherous. Um, such fun to watch. Yeah, I don't know about fun to watch, but yeah, he's treacherous. Uh, so anyway, everybody that's comment corner, that is the weekly daily recap. And until the young and the restless picks it up, I'll be doing it on a weekly basis. Uh, so I'll see you next week.